Hi there guys, welcome back to my channel and this is the final video of 2023. Hope you had a good Christmas. I was going to post a video just before Christmas but really I've had no time to do any videos uh, for the record collecting channel. Um, so this video I just wanted to do a quick round up of the year. What I was getting up to during the year, um, some of my highlights and maybe one or two low lights as well of the year. Uh, just to recap and go over the best and worst of 2023. So, let's, uh, right. So, yeah, so 2023, um, I think by May 2024, this channel would have been going for about two years, I think, or thereabouts. Um, I think I started it in May 2021. So um, this year I started a new channel, uh, a guitar channel. I'll link that below because uh, one of my other hobbies other than collecting records is uh, uh, guitars. And I've started getting into building guitars and that is one of the reasons why uh, I've been a bit conspicuous by my absence over the last two or three weeks. It's because I'm in the middle of finishing a guitar off for a good friend of mine uh, and I need to deliver it to him on the 6th of January. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm sort of pushing on and getting that done. That's a, a blue Stratocaster, which I've um, sort of done up. It's an old Squire, Squire Strat, which I've resprayed and upgraded with better pickups and, you know... I've sort of pulled the stops out a little bit with it. Uh, so my time's been taken up with that. It being Christmas, record buying has been a little bit lower on the list, uh, obviously because I've got to push all my finances towards record uh, uh, towards uh, Christmas. So I've bought a few records though uh, in December. I've got them down there. Um, I'll cover them when I've got a few more records in the, in the, you know, the, what I've bought. I'll probably do them uh, early January. So, started a new guitar channel. Um, that's under my own name, um, Andy Betts. Um, and I look back on my um, uh, yearly roundup video from last year and one of the things that I wanted to do this year was to get some new speakers for my stereo that never happened um, I know what speakers I want or the ones that I want to hear uh, and that's a pair of clips um, I'm looking at getting let's see see if I can get them up clips clips I can't remember what model they are. I think... I think they're the Klipsch RP8000F Mark IIs. Uh, they're currently retailing for around about £1,600. Not cheap. Um, but I'm also maybe going to look at the MoFi speakers, I don't know. I mean, I've got a budget in mind. Um, I don't think I'm going to be getting the speakers this year. I've got a lot going on this year. When I say this year, next year, 2024. I've got a big holiday coming up in, Jan in September, which I've got to pay for between now and then. Plus, yesterday I went out and ordered a new sofa. So this hideous thing is going uh, there's holes in it and stuff that's the perils of having a dog um, hence why it's covered up with this leopard print thing um, you know we've had it quite a few years now and it's tired it needs replacing so went out yesterday and ordered a new sofa that's being delivered in six weeks hopefully they'll deliver it on time um, <clears throat> so some of the highlights um, of the year. So we had Record Store Day early in the year, April time. And 
um, I come away with only one record, record store day, and that was this one, Chet Baker, uh, Chet, which is an absolutely fantastic record. Um, I can highly recommend this. This is all analog, cut from the original master tapes, and uh, it's a really good record. Uh, it's all instrumental. Um, I've also got Chet Baker Sings, which I bought after I bought this. If you just want the instrumental stuff, this is your go-to. This is really, really fantastic. A lot of it, a lot of it is sort of lounge music, so it's like kick back and chill out stuff. Really, really good. Highly recommend it. And uh, that was all I came away from, uh, away with from Record Store Day this year. So. It, the Beatles highlight of the year, I think, was, um, uh, for a lot of people, was now and then. Um, this, actually, is one of my low points. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the record. I, th I think the, the song is great. I think what they've done using AI to get John's voice out of the demo so they could mix it properly was great. What I don't like is that cover. I think that's, they could have done such a better job with that cover, that sleeve. That would have been a better sleeve front, you know, but that, uh, awful. Um, if you look at my review of this i've done a review of this and the music video as well you'll know that i've gone down on record as saying that i think they've compressed this to within an inch of his life and it's true it's awful the actual sound is not that good um it's terrible there's heavy compression on the guitars the electric acoustic guitars there's heavy compression on the piano um it just doesn't sound natural to me. Um, the actual song I like, but I think it's been spoilt by the production. So that's a bit of a low point for me. Obviously, the high point of the year for a lot of Beatles fans was the release of the Red and the Blue albums. Now, these are original pressings. These are not the new remixes. Um, I held off of buying them because I thought I may have been getting them for Christmas. I didn't. Um, I never know what I'm going to get for Christmas. It's always a, uh, a well-kept secret. <laughs> um, and I didn't get any vinyl for Christmas. So I'm going to have to get these remixes myself. Um, I am going to be doing a review of them. I have listen to both albums and I've made my notes um, I was actually holding out for the records to see if there's any difference between the streams and the vinyl um, so I may still do a review on the streams the, the stream like the um, the uh, I've got downloaded flat files of them I may do um, a review of those instead. Uh, I think that'll be adequate, really, for um, review purposes, and I'll get the vinyl later. And then I may do a comparison between the two. Um, so, throughout the year, I acquired quite a few records. So going way, way back to the beginning of the year, I discovered Lana Del Rey, and the first record I bought of her was this one, and that's Ultraviolence. Now, this was bought totally on a punt. I hadn't listened to it, even on Spotify. I hadn't even listened to any Lana Del Rey. What got me into Lana Del Rey was um, watching Mike Esposito at the Ingroove on his videos, and he every so often he says, oh, Lana Del Rey, absolutely brilliant. Uh, uh, my my um, guilty pleasure is Lana Del Rey. Lana Del Rey this, Lana Del Rey that. And I thought, I've heard of her. I've never heard her. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a punt. I'm just going to order a record at random. 
And I bought this because I really liked the name of the, the title of the album. I'm into the Clockwork Orange, and if you know the Clockwork Orange, you know ultraviolence is out of a Clockwork Orange, or it's a term used in a Clockwork Orange. Also, really like the cover. Uh, so I bought this, and that opened up the rabbit hole for me, which is the Lana Del Rey back catalogue, which I'm still acquiring to this day. Um, I still rate this as her best album. Um, I've got most of her early stuff now. I still rate this as the best album. This has got heavy sort of gothic um, influences to it. There's a track on here, I forget what it's called now. It sounds like The Cure. I think I said that in my review of it. Um, but no, great album. Highly recommended, Ultraviolence. Uh, and yeah, so then after that, I um, managed to acquire an original pressing of a Scott Walker record. And again, this sort of blew me away. When I compared this to the repress, the remaster, which is a digital remaster. This is an original uh, from 1967. Um, this is fantastic. It's got um, uh, Montague Terrace in blue on it, um, which is to me, it, Montague Terrace in blue was the first track I heard by Scott Walker when I first heard any of his solo stuff. It still really delivers the goods to me today. And uh, that was another acquisition during the year. I was lucky enough to get this for a really good price. It's in near mint condition, VG plus to near mint condition. Um, so yeah, I was well lucky to get that. I highly recommend that as well. Um, let's just have a slurp of the old uh, black coffee. Right. So, a friend of mine um, contacted me during the year and he said he's selling some of his uncle's records. My mate, Tom, he said, I'm selling some of my uncle's records and I've got a copy of Manassas by Stephen Stills. And I went, right, OK. Um, do you want it? And I said, well... How much do you want for it? He said, oh, 20 quid. I think he wanted 20 pounds for it. Uh, and I said, okay, yeah, I'll have that. I think I had uh, one or two other records off him as well. Manassas, Stephen Stills. This was a bit of a punt. I've heard some of the tracks off of it previously because my brother's got this and he loaned it to me years ago. And I, back then I couldn't get into it. Uh, I wasn't really into country rock at that time. That's shifted now. And when I p played this, save for the one or two bluegrass tracks that are on this, this is a fantastic album. Um, it's a double album, and it's seriously, seriously good. Um, this is an original. Um, when I bought this off Tom, the, the, the jacket was in near mint condition the records look like they've never been played uh, there was zero spindle marks on the records the only thing that was missing from this set was the picture in the sleeves and the poster so i went on discogs and i managed to find a junk a junky copy of this where the sleeves knackered, the records are not that good, but the inner sleeves are okay, and the poster is in is there. So I bought that from out of tenner, and uh, put the two together, and I've got a really good first pressing with poster, picture in the sleeves, the whole nine yards, and this is a great great record. If you like Crossy Stills and Nash, Crossy Stills, Nash and Young, you will like this. This is. Um, really, really good. It's uh, done in four movements. Um, 
one movement per side, uh, or different sort of uh, styles of music on each side. It's really, really good. Um, it's got some of the band uh, Dallas Taylor and Fuzzy Samuels played with Crosby Stills, Nash and Young on their tour. So, and I think they're also on um, Deja Vu, I think. So, yeah, highly recommend that. Highly recommend. And Manassas by Stephen Stills, that was something that I picked up during the year. These are records that were highlights for me, uh, which I picked up during the year. One of the biggest highlights for me was um, finally obtaining a copy of the Mark Hollis solo album. Um, this was a bit of a, a hit and miss affair really, because I ordered one copy of this. I ordered a copy of this brand new off of Discogs, still sealed. When it arrived, the packaging had been uh, bent and the record its jacket was creased and it looked awful. It was, an, it was pretty sad. And me being the pedantic sod that I am, thought, I can't live with this. I, I want a pristine cover. Because it's a very stark, stark cover. And it's perfectly white and you need it to be perfect. It's a piece of artwork, really. So I ordered another copy of it. And the other... The first copy with the dinged cover, um, I gave away in a competition during the year. Um, I forget the guy that won it. I hope you really enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the record when you got it. Um, it is what it is. But like I say, the record was in good nick, but the cover was trashed. But um, yeah, Mark Hollis from Talk 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 <laughs> Talk Talk. Brilliant uh, songwriter. Uh, much missed in the music industry. Um, he sort of went into retirement early. He became a recluse. He ended up moving to a, a village, I think in Oxfordshire, with his wife and kids. And that's where he died. Died of cancer. But um, Mark Hollis. And from this, I started collecting some uh, Talk Talk records as well. I could have pulled one of those out. Um, they're great cracking records as well, uh, if you like 80s um, synth rock pop type stuff. Right, so, uh, so another schlurp. So another highlight for me, and one that was a surprise. I wasn't expecting to pull this out as a highlight really, because I thought <coughs> when I was reviewing my Discogs purchase history, because I've done this totally off Discogs really, and memory of what I bought over the last 12 months. This was one of them. And uh, when I got this, this was a surprise, because uh, I didn't expect it to be as good. But then again, it is Scott Walker. I think this is the only record he made for with Virgin Records when he's with Virgin. Um, this is a mispressing, it's got actually two labels on one side and it's misaligned. So one of the labels actually goes into the run out groove. So when you're listening to the flip side of this, you've got to be really quick to lift the needle before it goes into the run out groove because it hits the label otherwise. Um, so it's a mispressing, but um, other than that, it's perfect. It plays perfectly. If you've heard uh, Night Flights and the four tracks by Scott Walker on Night Flights and you like them you'll love this because this was made shortly after Night Flights this was made in 1983 84 83 84 it's got two dates on here 1983 copyright 1984 oh. 1983 so this looks like it could be a 84 repress, possibly. I don't know. But it still sounds damn good. And uh, I highly recommend it. If you like Night Flights or the four Scott tracks on that album, you'll love this. Climate of Hunter, Scott Walker. Got into a bit of a Scott Walker kick during 2023. Um, still actively looking at collecting his 60s back catalogue. 
and plus I want some of his later albums. I want Tilt and I want The Drift. They'll come this year, hopefully. Um, uh, also, during the year, I started looking back on um, my old record collection that I sold in the early 2000s. And one of the records I sold um, in the early 2000s as part of my huge collection that I got rid of at a boot sale was this Systems of Romance by Ultravox. This was the last album that John Fox did with Ultravox. Every track on this album is a banger. Um, I cannot uh, recommend this enough. If you like early Ultravox, right, is it the first two albums, Ultravox and Ha Ha Ha, are really, really good. Ultravox, the first album, is quite raw, uh, underproduced. With this, this album was almost like the crossover album between John Fox Ultravox and Midjour Ultravox. This was the crossover album because there's Billy Curry was using synth sounds on this album, which he would go on to use in on the Vienna album and a Spirit a Spirit of Eden album. This is a cracking album. It's got Sleepwalk on it, uh, Slow Motion. Um, some of them is a great track. In fact, when I finish play, uh, filming this, I'm going to play this because it's just really uh, piqued my interest now. I've pulled it out. When I bought this, I was playing this relentlessly for about three weeks. Didn't, it didn't, or really didn't leave my turntable. Um, it was so good to revisit this album and uh, it's definitely a highlight for me uh, of 2023. And the final one, which is a fairly recent acquisition for me, uh, is another Lana Del Rey album. Um, this is an album that I bought and I had for about a month and didn't play it. Then all of a sudden, about four weeks ago, I played it. And it blew me away. And that's Blue Bannisters. I don't think this album gets as much kudos as her others. This is fantastic. And it is so well produced. This is, um, I think this is the follow up to Ultraviolence. Um, this is a seriously good album. Really love the photograph on the front of Lana Del Rey. You can see that's the sun. I've got a window to my right here and it's uh, shining through but there you go that's better so you can actually see that there yeah beautiful beautiful photograph uh lana del rey blue banisters and that is it for this yearly roundup i hope you had a great christmas have a great new year don't drink too much tonight this is going out on new year's eve don't drink too much tonight well maybe a few and uh, I'll see you in the new year. Like I say, um, I'm going to try and keep on top of these, um, the, the record collecting side of my hobbies. Excuse me. I have got the other channel going as well. Um, I've got a big project coming up on that other channel uh, once I've finished the Stratocaster for my friend Gary. Um, so once I've finish that Stratocaster I will give you all the information regarding the other build that I'm going to be doing on the, on the guitar channel. Um, what can you expect from me in 2024? Um, well uh, I'm going to be doing um, Record Store Day again this year hopefully I'll come away with more than one record. Uh, I did actually go armed with like a couple hundred quid last time intending to buy four or five records or six records or whatever but I didn't see anything that I took my fancy or what I did want they didn't have so I think I'm going to have to find a different outlet maybe because the record store I went to didn't have a big selection so uh, um, but yeah I'm going to slowly build up my record collection um, this year or next year sorry and uh We'll leave it at that. 
hit me in the comments below, click like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.